If you run a business, you probably know what it's like to sit down at your desk, open up your email, and see two or three hundred of them screaming at you to get back to you. Go through them, you're going to miss a bunch of them. Listen, email is cool, but it is not your friend. If you don't have a disciplined system of managing emails within your company, emails can kill you. We're going to be right back with some tips on how to get control of email. Welcome to the Communication Culture, where we help entrepreneurs and small businesses build transparency and accountability through effective communications. If you like this content, let's talk. Email Loy at LoyEdge.com or call 877-LOY-EDGE. Now, here we go. Email is the chaos creator's favorite weapon. They love to shoot out a bunch of squid ink with every half-baked thought that pops into their brain and then you have to deal with it unless you create a better platform for your vendors and your customers and your employees to communicate with you. Now we can talk about how you set up a good portal for communication with vendors and employees in a later video but this one I really want to get the point across to you how important it is to create a disciplined uh, email program with very distinct parameters in your company. Number one, emails travel down. They don't travel up. You've got to get people used to communicating with you internally through a regular weekly reporting system so that any communications that would normally just fly into an email actually go into an organized report that gets filed at a you know, specific time and date each week so that you can respond at your convenience at a time that you designate. Now if it's an urgent and important communication of course it doesn't go in the report or the email that calls for a phone call or a personal meeting. But it's important to get people trained to throw their uh, communications into something that is a weekly report. And the other thing is, you've got to train people how they communicate with you. You don't want broken sentences and, and little broken phrases. Listen, if it's worth communicating to the boss, it's worth communicating with context, details, and specifics. It's not too much to ask for people if they're going to take your time by sending you a suggestion, observation, complaint, idea, whatever it is, to articulate it clearly, to give it to you in a well-researched, detailed plan of action. And that also gives people the opportunity to become more independent in their thinking and to make decisions via something I call negative implied consent. That means in these reports, if people have some observation, for example, there's a rug in front of your door that trips people and nobody's dealt with it for a year. It's just always people are shuffling it around and somebody's going to get hurt, right? Well, instead of just popping in the email, hey, the rug, it's curled up. If I'm an employee, I'm going to say, I'm going to find an alternative for this. I'm going to go find another rug from one of our vendors. I'm going to send a picture of it. I'm going to say, I found this rug. I suggest that we use this as a replacement. It's a better rug. It fits with the decor. Here's how much it costs. And unless I hear otherwise, by Tuesday, uh, June 23rd at, at 5 p.m., I'm going to proceed and order the rug. Now, that's called negative implied consent because now, as, as the leader, I'm reading this. I don't have to respond. It'll just happen. So this person has, has independently solved this problem. Now that, that's a real shift in dynamics that you really want to have in your organization. So there's a lot more stuff about emails, but if you take care of those basics and get people to stop throwing all those emails in your box, you're going to really be able to take much better control of your internal communications. Thanks for joining Loy Edge, the Chaos Killer.